Premier League defeat of the season. What are your thoughts? Obviously disappointed because uh, it's an offside. It's the goal. So unfortunate to um, to have that decision against you. You had the opportunity, obviously, to get a point. The penalty. What did you make of it? No, it, it, first of all, the way they get round the, the penalty spot, get round Bruno and all that, that's not to my liking, but I do understand it. We shouldn't shouldn't be that way. Bruno's normally very good in those positions and unfortunately just uh, missed this one. Do you think that got in his head today? No, and doesn't get into Bruno's head. He's uh, strong mentally and uh, he'll, uh, he'll step forward again. Was he always definitely going to take the penalty first choice today? <laughs> The decisions made before the game, yeah. Extraordinary end to that game, but you've made history. A win here at long last after such a long wait. Yeah, first time since 2009. I think Gabby scored the winner last time. Uh, it's been a long time coming. I think our performance levels have been good uh, the last couple of times we've been here. Um, and what that does, it gives an awful lot of belief to, to the players now. Um, you know, we went to Chelsea, went toe to toe. We came here and went toe to toe. They probably had a lot, more, a lot more chances than us, but there were smaller chances because uh, they got in areas where we got really good blocks. But we had some really big chances in this game today, and I thought we deserved the win. Talk us through the end to that game. First your goal, and then the penalty. What were your thought process? Yeah, I mean. Listen, I think when we play three centre halves, we're going to be stronger set piece wise. Um, added height, uh, you know, Corny House is a colossus uh, in the air. And, um, you know, we cause them problems from set pieces. So, you know, we get that goal and we just want to see the game out then. And probably inevitable whenever we play Manchester United, we give a penalty away. And extremely harsh. I'm not sure where he's meant to put his arm because it's going down towards his side, comes at him very quick, and they give the penalty, and probably justice was done. To be fair, that wasn't even my, my uh, role at set pieces. Tyrone Mings, he just said, you know what, cool, you, you like, do my job. So I said, yeah, let's, let's do it. And, you know, I've started on the keeper, pulled up at the front, glance and header. And I knew, to be fair, as soon as it touched my head, I knew it was in. You know, I've seen it back. I thought it was a very harsh penalty. Um, you know, I'm not sure where he's meant to put his arm. It's flashed across. I think Cavani's got a touch on it. It's, it's his arm, um, which is down by his side. Um, but for me, justice was done when, when he missed it. You had to wait a long time to take the penalty. There was a lot of milling yeah. around the penalty yeah. spot. Were you happy with that? No, of course. Well, I wasn't going to mention it, but when you do, it's, it's not right that they do that. Uh, and... Um, I guess that should be a yellow card for someone, but I, I can't. Um, they've, uh, they've achieved what they wanted. Yep, three points is what they wanted, and that's what they achieved. Wasn't a smash and grab for Villa, though, was it, really, Mike? I mean, they caused United problems throughout the game. All sorts of problems. Villa were outstanding throughout the game. Uh, it started with uh, Cash down that right-hand side. He scored last week, full of confidence. Target getting in the back. And he, he should be scoring that. I mean, you don't get that many chances at Old Trafford. But the pressure that they put on, you see Watkins coming into your picture just here. They get another chance on another day. He does tuck that away. And they stretched them. The hard work that I put in, lovely little flick there. Uh, Douglas Louise with a forward ball. Watkins, you know what he wants to do here? He wants to come on inside. In the end, it's a, it's a great save from David De Gea there. But Villarreal. Really we're at it from, from start to finish. I mean, John McGinn, he wasn't this quick when I trained with him, but <laughs> <laughs> he managed to get in there. Just do you think Ramsey's going to slide home? He just loses his footing. But this is why they've the, 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 the brought in Austin McPhee, set-piece coach. They got the warning. He didn't score here, but, but House, with a little bit of movement, he mentioned it wasn't supposed to be his role, but he drops off, goes into that little bit of pocket, and it's a great finish. Mm. It, it really is okay. that old traffic. Yeah. Um, Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer thought, though, that that goal should have been called offside. Um, Alan? Well, I don't think it should be called offside, but there's an argument, certainly from Leicester, with what happened last week. It's a yeah. fantastic run from Courtney House. He gets his head on there, and Ollie Watkins, when he heads it, he is in front of him. He is in his uh, line of sight. Is he? Just. He's, there's no way he's stopping it. Is he in right? his line of sight, there's, there's no way he's, he's stopping it. He, well, he must be if he's in front of him. But identical last week. Indeedy, Barnes is in front of the goalkeeper. 
They give offside. The difference is, is because last side, the assistant, last week, sorry, the assistant flags for offside. Mm. Today, the assistant didn't flag consistency. Uh, what I'm saying is, I don't think either goal should be offside. Both goals yeah. should have been given. Yeah. But Leicester will look at that and say, hang on, that's not fair, that's not right. Mm. You have a point. There's no uh, Bruno's penalty. 22 out of, <laughs> out of 23 before this one, but. Um... Well, well, Courtney Hawthorne was just so excited and it was so unlucky, a little touch from Cavani. But it is a penalty. <laughs> you know, we've seen these give him hands away from his, his body, so... But look at Martinez here. Yeah. He's saying to Ronaldo, you take this. <laughs> you take... Look, <laughs> he's so much confidence. You see Dal out there and Fred there, push him away. I don't know if they've had afters, be, you know, beforehand. <laughs> but look at his little jig here. He's, he's, so, he's so excited, and then Tyro Mings is me saying to him, Look, was you, was you in his head? You got in his head. You got in his head. Yeah. But it's so unlike uh, Fernandez, isn't it? Yeah. We're missing a penalty. Who takes the next one? <laughs> you, you know who it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, I was man. actually surprised he didn't take it. I know, I know I Bruno's got a, yeah. a good record, I think, before today, 22 yeah. out of 23. Yeah, so right. so um, I was a bit surprised, but I, I would uh, I think he, might, I think be on he a, might be on the next one. Christian. An unbelievable finish to that game at Old Trafford. And we'll get to that penalty incident. First, we've got to talk about Villa uh, and that goal by Courtney Hawes. What a header by him after 88 minutes. I'll tell you what, if, when you take corners, you put the ball in the spot where your players can attack it. The ball is fantastic. But I'll tell you what, credit Courtney Hawes. That is an unbelievable header. The power that he's able to get. I know there's a lot of power on the cross. But it gets across Cavani, heads it in the top corner. Mm. You see there Watkins on Davidea. That's what, that's what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is saying. That's that Watkins is offside and that he's affecting David De Gea. Yeah. But I tell you what, for Dean mm. Smith, they were fantastic today, Aston Villa. They deserve something. And for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and United, that is a huge blow. That is yeah. a huge blow because you'd expect them to beat that Villa side. Villa played fantastic today. Yeah. Dean Smith said they went toe to toe, and they did. I know United had a ton of ton of shots. But not much clear cut. And if you look at the highlights, Villa had some really good opportunities in the game. Yeah. If, let's look at that goal again in terms of the corner that led yeah. to it. Was it the right call to award Villa a corner kick? Well, there's a lot of conjecture. You feel it as if it's come off Tyrone Mings. But <laughs> there's still a long. I mean, it's six or one art. You know, it comes off. <sighs> He does a good sack, and then yeah. it may come off Tyrone Mings' shoulder. But still, there's still a long way. To, you know, teams have ten corners in a game. If the fact yeah. that it goes for a corner is is immaterial. There's loads of uh, corners and uh, throw-ins that, of course, have gone the wrong way or have come off. I uh, take the nick off the other team, and you just don't moan about it. You just moan about mm. it when he when he concedes one. But the, the the conceding of the goal had nothing to do with the corner. It was the quality of the corner. It was Courtney House's movement. And it was his ability to get away from Cavani and get a fantastic flick when he's running away from the goal. Yeah. So it's got nothing to do, as far as I'm concerned, it's got nothing to do with Tyrone Mings and the decision to give the corner. Nonetheless, United were unhappy with that decision. Of course uh, let's are. speak to a former Premier League official. Dermot Gallagher joins us from the match centre. Dermot, always good to see you. Now, look, in these instances, VAR does, doesn't get involved with corner kicks and decisions. Why is that? Uh, there's a strict protocol, Manish. You know, it's it's so as we don't have people re-refereeing football matches. I think so. They go on the big decisions. Is it is it a goal? Is it a penalty? Is it a red card? Is it mistaken identity? I'm in Maka's camp here. You know, you look at that, and from the referee's point of view, he thinks Juan Bissaka's headed it out. Uh, Pogba's headed it out. Sorry. Um, yeah, Juan Bissaka. Juan Bissaka. Um, but it does flick off the back of Mings. I think it's it's one of them things. It happens. But there's a long way to go then. As Marcus says, you've still got to put the corner in, you know, something in corners. We talk about it now because of the consequence that arose from it. You know, if the ball had come across to Hay had caught the ball, we wouldn't even be looking at that. Yeah. yeah if, Man United, if Man United were 3 0 up at the time, we wouldn't be talking about yeah. it. Now. Yeah, it's it's just the possible. fact that the, the game has been decided on that particular moment. Yeah. Uh, Derma, as for the goal itself, Oli said afterwards he thinks it should have been ruled out for offside because of Oli Watkins' position in terms of David De Gea's. Eye line. What was your reading of this? Well, it, it, it's difficult, Manish, because uh, we saw one at Leicester uh, for Leicester last week against Brighton yeah. with uh, Harvey Barnes. Um, both decisions were made on field. That's the interesting thing that the assistant, you know, would relay to Mike Dean, 
I think Watkins is in front of the goalkeeper. Mike Dean's got a different angle. He, he would maybe say, well, Watkins is moving away. The goalkeeper's now come round him. And you see, at the point of contact there, Watkins has left De Gea. So they feed in their information, as they did, as they did last week. This is the goalkeeper's view. Um, you know, he can't see Watkins in front of him there. But what I would say, Manish, the, the officials on the field made that decision. Here's the decision last week. They felt that Harvey Barnes made a movement towards the ball. It is difficult because in this situation, it's subjective to the officials between them pooling their resources and decide at what point the player is in front of the goalkeeper and at what point he impacts. And I think today, Mike Dean would have came to the conclusion, as I said earlier, once De Gea moved round him, Hauser hadn't headed the ball at that point. When he does, you can see quite clearly that Watkins is the side of De Gea and he goes for the ball. Yeah, yeah. And if you see those two incidents, the Manchester United, well, sorry, the Aston Villa goal goes in the, De Gea's near post. You mm. can see why it was disallowed last week, because it goes across the goalkeeper, yeah. you know, dissecting himself and Harvey Barnes. So you can see why it was, it was disallowed last week. This one goes in De Gea's right-hand side. But the one thing I would say is that Watkins is offside there. He's definitely, definitely affecting David De Gea at this point. I understand the ball goes in the near post and David eventually pushes off Watkins, but at this point... He's affecting David here. That's that. That is certain. Yeah? Do you think that should be disallowed? At this point, there, I'd say that goal wouldn't be given. Looking at it still there, okay. but I think on the other angle, where, where you see where the ball goes, when, when he pushes Watkins away, yeah, it looks like there's a big gap. At this point, there's no gap. He's offside and he's affecting him. Dermot, is he impeding the keeper here? Well, I think we've got to break it down. I mean, uh, as. Uh, Owen said, you know, if you look at that, if you took it at that point, you would say yes, because you would say they're almost in physical contact. But what would happen there? At this, if you roll it back for me slightly, please. Yeah. Um, if you roll it back to there, at that point, the assistant will be the one who makes the decision at that point there, saying Watkins is an offside position. If you look at Mike Dean, he's got the position. If you roll it on now, and you see the, the second angle, because Mike Dean would have been alerted now, Watkins is an offside position. I need you to... Now, this is Mike Dean's view. And at that point, you can see they've cleared each other. De Gea goes for the ball. He has no interest in Watkins. So I think what they've done, they've pulled the resources, and that's the decision they've come to. Durham, do you think if, if, if David De Gea doesn't push away Oli Watkins and he stays where he is, they wouldn't give that goal, would they? Quite possibly. Yeah. Quite possibly. And I think that, that's the key, Owen, is that the movement of the players impacts on the decision. OK. Uh, you almost feel as if David De Gea, because Oli Watkins is standing so close to him, he gets occupied by he him does. instead of him following the about. ball. Yeah. He's thinking about getting him out the way. And, and then he's too late to move. But maybe if he doesn't, as you say, push him, it might, the, it might have been changed over. Yeah, and Dermot, uh, this term subjective is something I, you know, we could talk about all evening because <laughs> you're entering a grey area in interpretations Isn't of it ruling. Great, though? Isn't it great? It's great. <laughs> and who said VAR was going to yeah, stop all great, talking uh, in terms of controversial moments in matches? But talking of which, what about the penalty incident that Manchester United got? Of course, Bruno Fernandes skying the penalty. But what about the handball? Because I know both Steve and Owen feel this is quite harsh. Oh. Uh, maybe so. What I would say, Manish, is that they were very um, hard on this at the start of the season. If the ball's away from, if the arm's away from the body, which it was, and he's struck by the ball, the, the perverse irony of it, Manish, is at the same point in that game last week that uh, Manchester United on the receiving end for a similar incident at West Ham. Yeah. Absolutely. So you would say the referees have applied it consistently across the board. I didn't like. I didn't like the decision. I think that. Um, he, he knows, he thinks that Cavani's going to head the ball. Whether he gets a touch in it or not, it doesn't deviate the ball. But if he's moving left towards his goal, what on earth is he supposed to be doing with his hands? Mm. If you're moving up in the air, it's impossible to be jumping if you're defending with your hands by your side. It's yeah. not out there. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not deliberately motioning towards the ball. He's no. moving like this. So I felt really sorry for the, for the defender. OK. Dermot, thanks for joining us. Good to see you, as always. Um, let's have a look at the penalty incident. In fact, this was interesting. Emmy Martinez, <laughs> when, he, when he knows the penalty's been given, talk about mind games, he says to Ronaldo, I want you to take it. You take it. And Fernandez, of course, is in the middle of all this thinking, you know. Oh, I just wonder, actually, would that get under the skin of Bruno Fernandez? Did it... <laughs> Contribute to the fact that he wanted well, the, no. well, well, first of all, one in the roof of out. the net. Hey, he's not short crazy? on confidence, Martinez, is he? I love that. He's saying <laughs> one of the best in the world. You take it. I want to save your penalty. I tell you what, you, you, you might never ever see this again. Well, you won't see that ball ever again. <laughs> but you might not see Bruno take a pen yeah. like that. He just, 
Roberto Baggio, he just skied it, didn't he? Well, you see, uh, Emmy Martinez, after the Copa America and his antics there when, when, when they won the game, so you can see what he's up to. Yeah. But if, if Cristiano would have took it, he probably would have scored. So yeah, that's the thing. Did. But no, it doesn't get into, into no. players' minds. You're joking, what aren't happened you? What there with the penalty? <laughs> Just tried to smash he it. Just tried to smash he, it. And he doesn't they? normally do that. He normally takes, you know, he's looking for a spot, waits for the keeper. I don't know if somebody said the, the goalkeeper's really good and you've you got to pick, pick the corner or smash it. Yeah. But he just tried to hit it too hard, like, didn't he? You know, this mind games, it does not exist as much as people like to talk oh, about it. Oh, we love to it have it up. It does not exist Come on. in top footballers, Look, please. As for Manchester United, they have now lost their last two games without scoring, despite having 50 shots on goal, 10 of which on target. Where does this put Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and the pressure, perhaps, that might be building as a result of today's performance? Well, Fred and McTominay played again, didn't they? Yes. Uh, and maybe they might not do that again next, next time because there's so much world class, so many world-class players out there. Goalie, defence, everywhere. Just play one and get Pogba and Bruno in the middle of the, in the, middle of the park. Two number 10s. You've got world-class players in the attacking area. Just let them just go terrorise teams. They, mm. they could do it. They don't, I don't think... You need to play two sitters in a game where you, can, you need to control the park. And they didn't. They lost the game. They didn't have control of the game at any point. Plus, you had two defensive midfield players in there. So, play more attackers, control the ball, get closer to the opposition's goal and, and, and kill teams off. I think it's in them. And I think that result will maybe tweak things going forward.